Hello and welcome to Larry's Prairies, where you learn about animals and learn how to pronounce your teacher's name. So today is Thursday, February 11th, and as you probably know, we, this is the last day of our school week. We are off tomorrow. And, and tomorrow is an important day for more reasons than that. So for one, it is Lincoln's birthday. And, you know, Abraham Lincoln, of course, is one of the most important presidents of the United States. He was, yeah, he was president during, during the Civil War, it signed the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, free, freeing uh, black, black slaves from the, from the uh, Confederate territories. But, so, but he's worthy of celebration, and, and in fact is most likely the reason why we're off tomorrow, but I really can't say much about him on Larry's Furries, because President Lincoln didn't really have anything particular to do with animals. So instead, we will focus on the other significance of tomorrow. So tomorrow is also the Chinese New Year. So this, this upcoming year is the year of the ox. So ox, so ox in English is a very specific word. It, it refers to, uh, to uh, domestic cows, uh, usu usually castrated males, that are trained as labor animals, you know, to pull carts or plows or the like. If domestic, uh, domestic bull, bulls, they are castrated, ma castrated males that are ra raised for meat purposes are referred to as steers instead. So, in English, as I said, ox is a very specific term, but in the original Chinese that's translated year of the ox, it is not nearly so specific. So, the, that term ox, you know, does not does not specify anything about gender or about purpose. Any, you know, any domestic any domestic bovine counts, and not specific. Not it's not even specific to cattle. It also applies equally to the other bo bovines, such as the water buffalo, which will be today's animal because I think it's more interesting than the plain old cow. So. Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Cordata. It's an animal. It's a vertebrate. Class Mammalia, mammal. <laughs> order Audiodactyla. We see. This is now the third time we've seen that order. The Audiodactyls, as you recall, you know, other than the whales, are the Audiodactyls are are animals that 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 have a two to, even number toed structure with. With the uh, hooves instead of feet, instead of uh, feet, uh, other feet structure, uh, they're mo they're mostly ruminants. <laughs> so, uh, so they they uh, have a, that's it refers to a specific style of uh, digesting uh, plant products because the other dactyls are all herbivores. Again, with the, you know they accept a few uh, minor exceptions. But we're looking into more typical cases here. We're, so we are looking at family Bovidae, which so Bovidae is you know, refers to, of course, the the uh, common the common bovines, which are which are considered a subfamily. But it, the Bovidae also more broadly inc includes uh, things like sheep and goats. But we're looking at both. Bovines proper, and in particular, our species Ubalis arni. So that's the wild water buffalo. And there it is. It's eight to eight to ten feet long, five to six feet tall, weight thirteen hundred to twenty six hundred pounds, so around a ton. Tip, also, tip, typical size figures for for. A domestic cow. They're not that. They're not that different. They are. So water buffalo are herbivores. They mostly eat grasses. They they notably will eat crops if they get into to a farmer's field. So so of course farmers take take precautions to keep the wild water buffalo out of their fields, which is what which we will get to is a notable problem for this species. But you notice I speci you notice I specified wild water buffalo. 
because the domestic water buffalo is considered a separate species. It's, it's Bubalis bubalis. So, but, so as, as we've seen already in, in Larry's Ferries with the, with the wild, wild animals that, ha, that, have, that have a dom domestic or kindred breed, some, you know, some of them are considered separate species, such as uh, do dogs and wolves, whereas others, like, so, such as uh, turkeys and reindeer, the, the wild and the domestic population are, are the same species. But, but this is an example where the, where the domestic animal is considered separate. And domestic water buffaloes are used for meat, they're used for milk, they are used as, as labor animals, so as oxen as the, in, the, in the English sense. Uh, I think mo most notably, for, as far as a buffalo milk, uh, authentic mozzarella cheese is made with water buffalo milk rather than cow's milk. So, but of course, when you have, when you have, when you have a, dom a domestic animal like this, you often have feral populations. So those are, so feral animals are the are those that that are descended from the domestic one. So they're part of the spe the domestic species Bubalis bubalis, rather than the wild species Bubalis arni. But they but they have got, but they have gone off into the wild. They're no longer being kept by humans. They're, they're, act, they're acting as part of the wild ecosystem now and competing with the true wild buffalo for food, for habitat, and, and for reproduction because although they're listed as separate species, the, the domestic and wild water buffalo can still breed with each other. <laughs> so, of course, habitat for water buffalo is what you would expect. It's right, water. Or more specifically, it's wet, you know, grassy wetlands areas. You, in, you, fi you find water buffalo in South Asia, both in the Indian subcontinent and in, and in Southeast Asia, but populations are extremely fragmented. So I, so I cannot show you a map of the of the range of the wild, of the wild water buffalo because there isn't there isn't one. They have, they they live they live in isolated pockets of habitat so small that you couldn't see them on a, on a map on a map of the Asian region. So they they are they are severely endangered popul population only about two thousand five hundred and falling, and the major threats to the species habitat loss is the is a big huge one. It's like, yeah, I I mentioned severely fragmented habitat. And reason why? Well, what water buffalo are li are living in grassy wetlands. In in Asia, the rice farming industry is is using this very this very same terrain because a, because Asian rices are t are typically uh, gr grown in flooded flooded fields. So basically, wetlands just like what the water buffalo are looking for. And of and of course, when when a, when a area of, of wetlands becomes culti cultivated farmland, the farmers are going to be keeping the water buffalo away from it because the water buffalo will eat the rice if they're allowed to stay. So, you, a lot of rice farming in, in Asia because it's, it's the staple grain of, of the region and there's a lot of hu human beings, which means a lot of need for agriculture. So, a lot of so a lot of human competition for habitat, and the buffalo lose. And of course, in addition to uh, agriculture, uh, hydroelectric power s systems are also a potential threat to a uh, water buffalo habitat because uh, when when you uh, dam up a, ri a river in order to install a, a hydroelectric st power station on it, you have that decreases the amount of wetlands area available downstream from the river because less water flows through it. And, and so that's also destroying habitat that could potentially serve the water buffalo. And uh, finally, there's competition from the domestic water buffalo. So we have already said that there, 
there are a lot, there are fa there are feral populations of domestic water buffaloes. In fact, there are a lot more of those out, out in the world than than there are true wild water buffaloes, the original ancestral species. And so, the again in, in the comp in competition, the the wild water buffalo tends to tends to be outnumbered by by its domestic descendants. And so, it's. And so it's it's losing it's like it's fairly likely to go extinct, which I suppose is a matter of history repeating itself. Because if we look back at the domestic cow, we have a similar story. So the domestic cow was was bred from an animal called called, called the aurochs, which is also extinct. Of the last known members of that species died in the 17th century. And yeah, the story. The, the story of the you know, the oryx was also basically wiped out between hu human expansion and into its habitat and competition from feral domestic cattle, and the same thing is happening to wild water buffalo. So history is, is repeating, and it seems to be not so not so good story for all for all wild forms of the uh, ch of the Chinese oxen. <laughs> Which might not be all that great an omen for me either, I suppose, since I happen to have been born in the year of the ox. But, well, fortunately, I don't believe in that kind of thing anyway. <laughs> Most scientists don't, because there's no scientific evidence that things like the year of your birth have anything to do with uh, anything, really. <laughs> Alright, so, there's, so, that's what you need to know, I guess, about... The wild, about the water buffalo, both wild and domestic. So, sources, Wikipedia, of course, both, both for information on water buffaloes and on the Chinese zodiac. And, yeah, I also look, looked up the uh, IUCN entry, International Union of Conservation of Nature. It's the, that's the uh, international association that, de that deals with... Uh, Things like registering endangered species, <laughs> and Im images uh, from the various Wik Wikipedia contributors, and avail available for use. So, for, so well, enjoy, enjoy your brief, your brief holidays, uh, and uh, I'll see I'll see you next week with another animal. Bye for now.